welcome all the subscribers and viewers around the uh, globe to this uh, educational forum life made up of questions today one of the most happiest moment uh, i am entering into my 81st video uh, that with my beloved classmate my schoolmate dr rajesh kumar ramendran after long time i am meeting him he is currently working as planning and control engineer at sox so welcome you dr rakesh rakesh yes up to you yeah thanks thanks hari uh, it's a big pleasure meeting you too um yeah i mean it's been a long time since we left school i think it's probably at least 10 12 years so that's a more than long. that yes more than that yes so yeah um so thanks for having me um so like like hari mentioned i'm currently a planning and uh, controls engineer at uh, zooks zooks is a self driving company uh, it's actually owned by amazon and uh, we we want to have uh, self driving urban transportation uh, working in, uh, pretty soon um, so we aim to have uh, self driving vehicles in the streets uh, so that's the goal of the company so coming back to uh, yeah so that is pretty much what i'm trying to do right now yeah so of course so the most fascinating and amazing thing uh, in your profile is that i know that you had done your btech in civil engineering from nit calicut right so after that uh, how was the transformation from civil engineering background to now this robotics or a or uh, like computer science or electronics embedded uh, we can call it in many ways how you made this transformation from civil engineering background yeah that's an uh, interesting question so uh, this is one of the questions that i get a lot so um, strictly speaking uh, my my uh, i was always interested in uh, like embedded systems computer science uh, programming um, uh, electronic circuits and stuff uh, or to be more precise my first love was always physics i always wanted to be a theoretical physician uh, and uh, so I'll, in my like when i was doing my 12th uh, and when i inquire about what are my prospects of doing a, a career in theoretical physics in india uh, the feedback was pretty much like yeah you may not like uh, going into college doing uh, physics that the career prospect is not that great um, and also it may not be that interesting as the way you see it as the curriculum is not so interesting or else you have to do some sort of an undergraduate degree in abroad and being like in a middle class family uh, doing an undergraduate degree in physics in abroad is not something that you can envision at that point of time so so the next thing was like uh, okay uh, the other thing i always loved uh, was um, uh, writing programs and also uh, building circuits so i wanted to actually do uh, engineering and computer science and in fact um, immediately after my 12th i had actually joined uh, nit raipur uh, as a computer science graduate student and um, sorry undergrad student so i was starting my btech in computer science there i was there for some time i actually wanted to uh, try my chances to get into one of the iits again um, uh, uh, for the next time so uh, certain things happened in the sense that i want i came back to write the exams i had some medical issues uh, so that didn't go very well so uh, what happened was i lost a, 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 i lost a whole semester in that campus and uh, in, in that curriculum so my options were i would have to probably do a uh, wait for another year to actually finish that semester where i can join back in nit calicut nit raipur or with my current ranking uh, which i wrote, uh, had at that point i could join other institute uh, mostly nit calicut and due to my uh, health conditions and things at that point of time everybody suggested it's better not to go that far maybe you can try uh, doing uh, uh, nit uh, doing bta at nit calicut although you might only end up getting civil engineering or something um that was a uh, not a great decision from my part in the sense that that was sort of like a forced decision um I, that was never part of my passion but fortunately nit calicut had a lot of nice groups of uh, robotics people who are like really really uh, focused on doing robotics stuff so i had like pretty good people like people who are like a couple of years senior to me uh, who who encouraged me to do, continue my passion so uh, i did ended up doing some robotic stuff while at nit calicut uh, i actually even um, ended up participating in robotics competitions even in uh, iit bombay so 
and yeah, uh, so that helped me build some profile. And then um, one of my seniors who had actually gone to John Hopkins uh, had actually told me that like in abroad, there's no uh, restriction as such, like you, you need a particular background. If you, if you can pull off saying, hey, I have enough, uh, I've done enough, I have enough interest and I've done enough to show my interest, you can always apply for a different uh, or, a tra of, or, or a different track of your interest. Um, you can do some sort of like a post-graduation or a PhD, and then you can pro uh, probably follow your passion there. So yeah, having followed followed that as I, I heard uh, a couple of papers also uh, in the field when I was in uh, and I, when I was doing my B Tech in civil engineering. So I, so one good thing about the NITs or NIT Cal, uh, in, in general NIT is that we had a very strict uh, schedule in the sense that uh, you you know when your program is going to end when your semester would end. So that would always help you to plan yourself and also. To, and we also had like a three month vacation, which is actually pretty long, right? which is fixed. Like you, you definitely gonna get that three month off. So, which is unfortunately unlike in many institute or many other colleges in across uh, Carolina, other places. So that helped you in the sense that I was able to use those uh, vacation period to self teach myself most of the backgrounds I required to and are doing like most of the computer science like algorithms aspects um like even electronic stuff and some of the mechanics uh, i even ended up writing um gate in mechanical engineering and i believe i had around 99.4 percentile in, in gate score for mechanical engineering um and uh but unfortunately because i didn't have a b-tech in mechanical engineering most none of the iits was willing to accept me as an mtech student so i but fortunately uh Arizona state was uh good enough to accept my application as a PhD student there um, without even having a master's degree. So that's where I joined their mechanical department. Uh, so at that point, their mechanical department had a small robotics section. There was a few faculties, but now it has grown to, I think they're starting to have sort of like a robotics institute kind of a thing right now. So yeah, that's that sort of like helped me to pave the way. So that flair was always there, just that the surroundings helped me to keep up that flair all throughout. Yes, Rajesh, but actually my question is that you are very much uh, passionate about physics. So there are some branches like uh, engineering physics in NIT Calicut also. Uh, I don't think they're in NIT Calicut. I don't know if it is there currently. Uh, when I, I don't think okay, fine. There. And I think uh, yeah. this physics is a broad area, like it's one of the fundamental basic sciences. So my question is that there is a mathematics in physics, but is there a physics in mathematics? Okay. Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. So I think uh, the question from come, stems from an in, uh, historical perspective. So for example, like if you, if you take like, you know, long time back when people like Newton or Galileo was actually working on problems, they were not really physicists or mathematicians per se. They're mostly philosophers. So, uh, or even if you go even further, like Greeks or Babylonians or early Indian civilizations, uh, people were like mostly focused on uh, developing mathematics for their day-to-day -day needs. Like we develop numbers so that we could count. Um, like you know, you, you know what I mean by five uh, stones and or you know five apples. So that's what we initially developed mathematics for. And as like you know we progressed, I believe people had this um, kind of a um, curiosity for nature, and that. That's how, like you know, people like Newton and others, they were trying to like learn what these things are like. And mathematics was the right language to actually model things, so it was pretty naturally integrated into it. So, I'll, if I quote uh, Richard Feynman, uh, I, I I always think what he said was right in the sense that there's no, uh, I mean, mathematics is an independent stuff. Like in mathematics is should not be out, we should never, or as a physicist or any physicist should expect mathematicians to develop anything for them. So mathematics is something like a language. So it's, it's independently developed. And physics uses that language to best explain or like to best model what's want to have it. So it, it is entirely possible that like 
like if you meet an alien species, they might have a different set of mathematics, which is in a different language to express the same set of phenomena, which would be very different from red. And it might be even superior to us, uh, depending on how, how intelligent those species would be. Uh, and that may not have anything the way that we think about our uh, set of equations. So, so at least after 1900s, like uh, people like Hilbert and others, they had this whole strong notion about, okay, mathematics should be have an independent uh, existence. So things like you can prove stuff in mathematics. So there is things like proving because there is something set of axioms which we think to be correct. And then based on that, you can prove. In science, you cannot prove anything to be right. You can only give uh, convincing evidence that, okay, this is something right. So for example, um, you had Newton's laws of gravity and you had a very good equation that could predict a lot of things. There were admirable evidence showing that that is the, the right way to think about gravity. Like people tested that. Even then there, like, there were like small issues with that. For example, there's the idea of the pers uh, perturbation in a Mercury's orbit, which was actually which was, I think it was like less than a half arc or second or something like that. Yeah, don't quote me around, but something around that. It's a small error, uh, but it was still an error. It couldn't, the Newton's gravity could not, or Newton's equations could not predict that. And later on, like when general relativity was there, um, Albert Einstein was actually, or Albert Einstein's general relativity was able to take into account and was to explain. But Taking a step further, the tools that was required to for Albert Einstein to develop his general relativity, which is essentially a differential uh, a differential geometry, uh, was never developed with in mathematics with the intent to help uh, general relativity. It was an independent branch which was actually developed by people like uh, Carl Gauss, um, Riemann, and others, which is out of their mathematical curiosity of developing theorems, which is independent of what the physical or which uh, which eventually had some applications in physics. Similarly, in quantum mechanics, um, uh, like quantum mechanics was developed independently. The tools in mathematics like Hilbert spaces and stuff or uh, operator theories were never developed with the intention to help quantum mechanics. It just was physics were physicists were able to identify that, hey, there is something that we can borrow from mathematics that we can actually apply in physics. So I would argue the point is mostly like mathematics, uh, at least from like the more modern mathematics is more of like an independent thing that has been developed in a more abstract, abstract way, which may or may not have any application in the real world. Uh, history has shown we were able to get a lot of things from mathematics. Even recently, um, I think a couple of years back, there was a Nobel Prize on topological insulators, which actually used this ideas from um, topology, which is actually a branch of mathematics developed, I think, in early 1900s. So, yeah. so yeah. So I would say the argument is like physics and uh, is an independent field which try to understand the phenomena, and mathematics is just the language that physicists use to actually just collect and model it. So you could entirely have different mathematics that would help physics. So you could have a physics without any mathematics, but then it won't be useful to anything because you you can just say the phenomena, but that much can be done about it, yes. Yes, I think uh, as you have mentioned, mathematical can be considered as a universal language of science. For example, not only physics, you can take organic chemistry, the valency of carbon, that is we are telling the 12, uh, then all these things, the triple bond of nitrogen, NS3, which is the strongest bond, then coming to bioinformatics or genetical engineering, or it can be linked with anything, but uh, all are using mathematics in one or the other way. Uh, as I had gone through, uh, in A also we are speaking about the mathematical modeling. You can say, uh, you can take the example of a simple experiment, whether it's an ohm, uh, Ohm's law, like V is equal to IR, directly proportional, that linear graph, we are just using that equation, uh, then plotting, taking the values and plotting. So that mathematical equation, where that experiment is done based upon that equation. So all the experiments or all the patterns or all the lab examinations are being conducted based upon a formulation. So is there any like methodologies where mathematical modeling is not uh, happening? Is there any uh, application of like, uh, in your case, you're doing uh, um, an application on automated vehicle? automated driving of vehicles. So the definitely there will be coming the probability, the optimization. So how you can link it with that uh, physics part or the computer science part? 
I mean, no. so I mean, for the first question, like, can we have any model or anything without mathematical models? You could, you could always think about abstract things. Uh, the problem is how do you communicate to someone? You can always tell that, hey, I, for example, if like Newton wanted to communicate gravity to somebody, he can say, hey, uh, oh, things are falling and uh, things at a distance have this property. Um, and uh, I mean, it's not the Newton that came up with this idea the first time. Like many people before him have also thought about gravity. Even people in India have also thought about gravity. The difference between what Newton did and what others like before him did was he was able to formulate that in a way, in a rigorous way that he could actually uh, communicate with others and others could test it. So if you want to test something, you need to somehow convert it into some level of uh, an abstractical way with that people can actually identify easily. Like you need some sort of a number system. Like you shouldn't have some numbering system or some some type of uh, calculations can need to be done. So so that you can know what what sort of like a, a value that you can expect. So for example, like you know, uh, if I want to say, hey. Uh, uh, this is the formula for gravity. Uh, you should experience so much force. If you set up an experiment that can measure this force, it should match with your observation um, or you match with your formulation. Only then your formulation is right. You could have different formulation. Only the one that actually like you know naturally gets selected due to its validity with experiments get uh, get selected and becomes like more of like a truth. Um, on the second part of the thing is. Yeah, I mean, definitely. There's no other way I can think about. Like, and it is extensively used with mathematical. So, um, so basically, uh, being in the, in the planning room, it is uh, mostly about doing things like tree searches and stuff, which is or graph searching. Graph searching is a very important field in computer science, and uh, graph searching used to be a very abstracting. Um, so, a graph used to be something like a network which has nodes, uh, or or position or points and were connected by something called as an edges. And uh, graph searching has been a very old field in computer science. Oh, it was actually old field in mathematics, which is, uh, was taken into computer science when computer science became a field of itself. Uh, the thing was in early 50s uh, and 60s, people used to like talk about graph searching or teach graph searching in classes, but they never uh, had any strong enough machine that could actually run a graph searching. But today we run graph searching in our mobile phones every time when you open up a Google Maps and ask for a route. So that in some sense, it's actually been like the the way, although we had the models and the mathematical thing, it's only when, <coughs> excuse me, it's only when you, uh, you were able to convert that into some sort of like a tangible way or a computational way that you were able to reap the benefits out of it, yeah. Did, did I answer your question there? Yeah. Yeah. So the the finally we can conclude it like it's like a language, and it yeah. depends upon how we are using. A model can be the uh, experiments can be done without mathematical modeling also, and with modeling also it depends. So finally, my question is that uh, you are into robotics, so robotics can be considered like a blended uh, applications of civil, mechanical, electronics, computer science. Everything is coming together. So which area, being a graduate in civil engineering, are you fascinated into civil structural side or into the crust of the computer science or the electronics side? Uh, okay, yeah, I mean, there has been some applications about uh, of using um, like you know, robotics or like sensing uh, technology in civil engineering applications, like smart buildings and stuff. I never touched any of that. In fact, I never used any of my civil engineering background once I've actually started my grad school. So that part has never been used in NSEN. So I mostly in the algorithm. So uh, in my PhD and um, I was more of like a controls engineer or a controls person. So I loved learning control theory. Uh, control theory is supposed to be traditionally a part of electrical engineering, uh, but it's not really, it's that you could actually apply control theory to anything that you want. Um, it is one of the oldest fields uh, that has been well matured and have most of our applications that you run to that you can think about today as uses some form of control theory in some way or the other. Uh, or anytime you fly on the airplane, you're using a lot of control theory in that. So my, uh, my focus was mostly in uh, control theory during my PhD. Uh, when I was doing my postdoc, I, I switched uh, gears a little bit more into more of a computer science aspect of things. Um, so I was looking into more of 
algorithmic uh, developments and uh, how algorithms, I mean, how to uh, develop distributed algorithms and that kind of things. So those are, so I would say my uh, focus was more in, in the electrical computer science area of things. Yeah. Uh, on that domain. Yeah. So uh, I think that now the application of civil is also the like smart buildings are coming. Robotic parking is coming. It's a blended thing where the structure as well as the uh, processor or the automation can be blended together. So what is your opinion about the, this is to the message to the currently doing undergraduates or masters. Like what are the future scopes of the basic engineering? Civil being one of the, uh, can be known as the mother of all other engineering <laughs> branches. What is the scope? What is the scope of civil engineering? I wouldn't call one as a mother of an in fact there's I don't think there is anything like one to be like complementing or like you know distinct from others. So to to be putting in a much more broader perspective, anything that applies forces or uh, have some electronic components come from electromagnetic interactions, which is just one set of equations that Maxwell wrote. So you can say uh, electromagnetic uh, equations or EM uh, equations are the mother of all engineering in that sense. But I mean, that that's just the detailing part of things. But uh, coming back to the point, like I would always say, you should always keep your options open. And especially uh, somebody doing a BTEC in India, uh, you should keep in mind for the fact that world is changing very fast. And uh, I don't think the curriculum that you probably are looking into or that learning is updated or in that rate. So you should always have, an, and also I don't think anybody who joins the engineering branch at, the, at a point when you had really less clue about what each engineering branches does, uh, had really thought about whether you had the real interest in that particular branch. It's mostly your, you you write an uh, entrance exam, you, you get a rank and you just pick up college based or college or like you know, engineering based on some someone else's opinion um, you yourself might get evolved or or should have your like keep yourself open enough to evolve uh, and always try to have an open mind to actually learning new stuff not just from your branch of engineering also from other branches of engineering so that you might sometimes feel some some other aspect more interesting compared to what you need never restrict yourself to just one aspect of things and also in the coming world, like, you know, I don't think people with one skill or like, you know, having, I mean, specialty is definitely required, but to start with, you should have a broader picture about what's happening all around uh, and, and most of what each engineering does. Uh, 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 if I restrict myself to engineering, uh, what of most of engineering does and then how you can actually build from there. And uh, so you might like you know, in future end up starting with one branch and ended up like you know, working for a different thing altogether so i mean that is always there i know people who start doing core engineering ended up doing software job and development jobs but i'm not talking about that i'm talking about people who actually want understand what uh they want to actually perceive as such like a new career thing maybe like you know moving away from um one branch for another, for another because you found there's something interesting there that you want to try out so always keep that open mind to to try out new stuff yeah okay so thank you ragesh kumar ramachandra for this wonderful evening so uh wish you all the very best in your future so thank you thank you thanks a lot for having me it was a great pleasure having a chat with you see you uh, have a nice uh, weekend to you bye okay thank you bye, -bye.